How may we determine quality assurance objectives? To understand that, in this video, we will learn about management and manager process, who is who in a quality structure and internal audits. To talk about quality structure in any institution, we need to clarify the process management. Process management implies looking at the organization, not in a departmental way, but in an integrated cross-cutting way, where there are, by each process, inputs, that is to say, the set of information and documents that allow the decision makers to be well informed, for example, the rates and diagnosis of dropout causes, activities, for example, the set of de development activities regardless of functional area of organizations that develop them. For instance, activities developed within the scope of strategies to fight students' dropouts. Outputs. It comprises results and analysis of the impacts of the development activities. Naturally, in an improvement cycle perspective, the outputs are the sources of the inputs. What is the meaning of the process management? Process management presumes a vision of an organization as an interconnected and interacting network of process through which objectives are achieved. A split of supervision over individuals, function, a functional area managers, from supervision over results, process managers. A representation of integration and synchronization of efforts, resources, and objectives between functional areas and process, enabling the coexistence of these factors. We can have process of many kinds, for instance, strategic ones such as strategic management, sustainability, welfare service, and so on, the main ones such as teaching, for example, student pathway, research, community relationship, and others, the supporting ones such as human resources, financial resources, material resources, and so on, and those intending to review the system, like stakeholder satisfaction, internal audits, certifications, and etc. Process management necessarily means the existence of an identification and adequate characterization of the process, the assignment of responsibilities for its management and coordination, the evaluation of its effectiveness. Thus, each process must have a designated manager from whom is expected to guarantee the smooth running of the process, periodically monitor the indicators, define improvement actions in conjunction with the different stakeholders, accompany the implementation of improvement actions in conjunction with various stakeholders. Who is who in quality structure? One this is aspect to bear in mind in this is to know the function undertaken by any person of the body linked to the process. We will speak about this it next. When we think about quality structure, we must therefore think not only of the quality support structure, but also of the structure of the process of, at different levels. Thus, in the support structure, it is important to have an advisory body, a coordinating body, and an operational structures, both at institutional and local levels. It is also important to define the process structure at the institutional and at local levels. This will be the structure responsible for personalizing the quality systems and implementing improvement actions. At this point, it is important to conceive a perfect integration between these two structures so that the quality system is perfectly integrated in the institution's daily routine and fundamentally in the daily routine of each of the process managers. 
The advisory body is a solid support body in the decision-making process by the institution's leaders. This body could be composed by directors of organizational units, system coordination, heads of service, external entities, students, and other individuals as well. And it will have the competence to, among other functions, validate the quality policy, support the leader's decision, appraise improvement process. In addition, it will be useful to have a coordinating body for the quality system, which will be responsible for the operational decisions of the quality systems. This structure may comprise, for instance, institutional coordination of the system, local coordination of the system, students, and others. This body could have the following functions process liaison, system monitoring, definition of improvement process, among other functions. Finally, it will be important to have quality structures in place, both at institutional and local levels, which will be the ones responsible for putting the quality system to work effectively. For instance, at the institutional level, we could have the institutional coordination of the system, technical experts with technical knowledge in quality field, and at the local level, we could signal the local coordination of the system, technical experts with technical knowledge in quality fields, teachers who assume responsibility in the area of quality, students. The function of these quality structures include collaboration with the process managers in monitoring, making the annual report of quality system, elaboration of the institutional documentation of quality system, coordination self-assignment process, listening to internal stakeholders, to coordinate internal audits, and so on. Monitoring activities are, of course, done within the quality structure itself, whenever they are done by the process managers or whenever they are executed by internal structures. Nonetheless, they can and should also be done outside the quality structure to give the system other visions and other looks. First, by external audit mechanisms, but also by internal audit mechanisms, which allow a broader view of the institution in the identify area of improvement. Internal audits play a key role in the evalua evaluation of the quality system and should be an integral part of the quality framework as they allow analyze the compliance between institutional practice and ex external benchmarks, verify the compliance between institution practice and internal benchmark, recommend improvement actions per process. Therefore, it is crucial that they have a broad diversified representation of internal stakeholders, namely teachers, non-teaching staff and students.